This Tuesday, the College Football Playoff Committee will release their first playoff rankings of the year. But every week, I was thinking about doing my own little rankings. So tonight is going to be the first week of those playoff rankings. So I know there's going to be some controversy here. I already know that. But the great thing about controversy is everybody has an opinion. And opinions are really important because you could really learn something from the other party. And plus, nobody's going to get this exactly correct. Not even the committee will. The committee will screw up eventually. But let's just hope they don't screw up at a crucial point in this process. Like toward the last week of it. Like they did the first year they did this. But they didn't screw up too bad considering Ohio State won the national championship that year. But still, I think that first year showed an example of how controversial this process can really be. So my process for this is going to be really controversial. So just letting everybody know right now. But let's just start off with what's obvious here. Number one. Alabama. Number two, Georgia. Because these two have been the best teams in college football so far. I mean, especially if these two teams were to play each other right now, I don't know who would be the favorite. I would say Alabama would be about a three-point favorite if these two were to face off for an SEC title right now. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. They still got some challenges ahead. Everybody's going to have some challenges. We're just getting to the month of November, and that's where everything breaks loose in the college football season. But I'm going to start working backwards here. I'm going to work backwards all the way from here, from 10 to 7. Number 10, I've got, I've got Oklahoma State. I've got Miami at number 9. And I know that's going to be filled with controversy. I know there's going to be somebody in the comment section. And that person knows exactly who he is. Number eight is Oklahoma. And number seven is going to be Penn State. Now the objective for this, number ten being Oklahoma State, yes, they had a convincing win today against West Virginia. But still, Oklahoma State really had a struggle win against Texas. That TCU game, they needed TCU to stay undefeated for that win to really count. But they still got they still got some games ahead. Iowa State in a couple of weeks. Bedlam next week. In fact, I feel like if TCU would have won today, Oklahoma State would probably go up higher in these rankings. But I feel like that's something Oklahoma State needed. They needed TCU to finish the year unbeaten for them to have a chance to even to get back up there. But this is where it gets really interesting. I'm going to put the number 16. Number 6, I have Wisconsin. And for obvious reasons. They haven't played a convincing schedule yet. Their, conv- their most productive victory so far has been Northwestern. And I'm saying Northwestern because they beat Michigan State. But still, Wisconsin's got the golden ticket to the Big Ten Championship game. I mean, their biggest challenge left is Michigan, but they get Michigan at home. Second biggest challenge, Iowa, get them at home. So Wisconsin's kind of sitting in a perfect spot right now, but if Wisconsin screws up one of the games, they're going to be automatically out due to the fact that they don't have a convincing enough, a big enough win resume to be considered for a top four. So Wisconsin has to finish the year undefeated, in my opinion, for them to make the college world playoff. And, let's see, number three, this could be obvious as well, but Notre Dame. And this is where it gets exciting. Is it Ohio State or Clemson number four? The answer to that question is, it's Ohio State at four, Clemson at five. And here's the explanation with these. Clemson number five. They have the best resume out of anybody in college football right now. Out of the teams they've beaten, they've beaten Auburn back when they were highly ranked. Virginia Tech. They've beaten all these different teams. All these teams with, with when they were highly ranked at the time. So Clemson's got... In fact, if we look at Clemson's schedule right here, They've got the most productive 
the most productive winning schedule out of anybody in this top ten. In fact, I should have I should have paid attention and looked this up before I did this, so I genuinely apologize. I promise I'm going to get better at this next week. Oh, that's why. They beat number 13, Auburn, 14-6. to six. On the road at Louisville, and they were number 14 at the time. I know that that win may not be as productive at these days, because Louisville's been struggling. On the road, Virginia Tech, 31-17. They did have that one loss to Syracuse, but everybody's going to have that one loss. They used up their mulligan. But the remaining schedule, their biggest challenge is going to be next week on the road at NC State. And that's going to be a real challenge. Other than that, their games coming up are Florida State, that rivalry game, but it's a rivalry game, anything can happen. And South Carolina at the end of the year, and the Citadel on the 17th, which they have a 99.6% chance of winning that game. So Clemson's got the best resume. If, if we're looking at teams about who beat the... Who beat the strongest teams out of anybody else? Clemson's got that right now. And Ohio State, they may have lost to Oklahoma Week 2 by double digits at home. But still, today's victory against Penn State should solidify that Ohio State deserves to be a top 4 team. Because everybody's going to have that home loss. Because based on the history, the teams that win national championships suffer a home loss. Clemson did it last year. Alabama did it two years ago. Ohio State did it. In fact, all three national champions under this playoff system, has lost a game at home. So Ohio State should be solidified as a number four team because when they're at their best, they are one of the most unstoppable teams in college football. And that comeback against Penn State, it just solidified that they deserve to be number four. Number three, Notre Dame. Now, hear me out on this one. Notre Dame has got the second best schedule out of anybody other than Clemson. In fact, the only other team you could argue that has a better resume than Clemson does is Notre Dame. In fact, Notre Dame's only loss is a 20-19 loss against Georgia in Week 2, where they looked like the better team most of that game. So if one or two things go differently in that Georgia game, we're talking maybe Notre Dame being at number 2. I only say number 2 because there's no way I would put Alabama not at number 1 at this point. But Notre Dame, they've got, a, they've got tough games coming up, including road games against Miami in two weeks and on the road at Stanford at the end of the year. So Notre Dame, their buffer is, they don't have any buffer anymore. If they would have beaten Georgia, then they would have had a buffer. But since they couldn't pull that out, they have no buffer left. They've got to win out to have a chance of going to the college football playoff. I think if they do win out, I think they will make the college football playoff. Anyway, so that is my top ten. As you can see, that is the top ten. Comment your top ten down below. Also, comment what you like about my top ten, what you don't like about it. I know someone's going to like something about it, and somebody's not going to like something about it. So, like and subscribe to the channel. Share the video with your friends and family. I will see you next time. Have a good day, everyone.